So Mohamed Morsi promised a new Egypt as he was sworn into office, becoming the country's first democratically elected president. The Muslim Brotherhood's candidate took the oath before the Supreme Constitutional Court in the capital. And in a speech at Cairo University, he called on the military to return to its duty of protecting the country. The new Egypt will witness a president who is working for the nation and who is a servant to the people. This is my first mission. I am uh, an arbitrator between the authorities and I will maintain the constitution and the laws and after the trust put in me by the people in such fair elections under the supervision of the great and fair judges of Egypt, protected and safeguarded by the armed forces and the police, who are fair. But it's not clear yet how much power the country's military will actually give him. A formal ceremony to mark the handover of power from civilian rule has been taking place at a military base just outside of Cairo. But Morsi's ability to rule Egypt's already been constrained by an army decree limiting his powers. The military's assumed parliament's legislative role and can block laws proposed by the government, by the president. But the president retains some rights of veto. Although Morsi is yet to appoint a cabinet, when he does, it'll be restricted in what legislation it can pass. Perhaps crucially, he'll have no control over the military. SCAF, not the president, will determine its role and budget. Al Jazeera's senior political analyst Marwan Bashara joins me from Cairo. Uh, Marwan, first of all, let's take a moment to place uh, this significant event within Egyptian history as well as the revolution which we saw last year. What do we have here? Um, a really historic moment or is it in fact a net reversal of the democratic gains of the revolution? Well, certainly this is, as you said earlier, the first elected president. And when we say the first, Veronica, it's the first not only in decades, not only in centuries, but in millennia. In the sense, this is the first elected civilian president since the pharaohs in this country. So it is historic by uh, any measure. On the other hand, here within the country, this has come 18 months after the revolution erupted in Tahrir Square right here behind me. And in a sense, this is the first fruit, if you will, real tangible fruits of the revolution, having uh, democratic elections and having one of those who were imprisoned just recently become uh, the president, the highest position in this country. But yes, at the same time, it is happening uh, within a power struggle that's going on in the country, whereby the revolution has made certain successes and has taken on certain positions, but yet there are still a number of factors and a number of centers of power within the country that are competing with the new president and with the new system in place. Marwan, just want to point out to our viewers that as you're speaking, we're showing on the right hand of our viewers' screen some live pictures of a speech that Morsi is giving right now at that military base right outside of Cairo. Um, it, worth pointing out, perhaps, in the context of what we're talking about, that this base was a place where Muslim Brotherhood members have been interrogated. This is, this is what is, you could say, paradoxical, but that's also what is so historic about this whole thing, is that there has been long-term uh, uh, long fears uh, from the regime in this country over the last six or seven or eight decades from the Muslim Brotherhood, and there has been fear, of course, from the Islamists in this country, uh, uh, from the military who were put them in prison and so on and so forth over the last decades. So in a sense, where we're moving now is everyone is moving to the center and trying to find a reconciliation process whereby a certain division of labor has just taken place, whereby the military maintains certain influence, maintains certain veto power on questions of security, but where also the new Islamist uh, president is taking on claiming to represent the revolution and basically bringing in a whole new civilian political dimension to the ruling systems in the country. But that is going to be extremely difficult, isn't it? Marwan Bashara, I mean, um, it's political scientists talk about something called a deep state in Turkey and in Egypt, the kind of military's 
deep vested interest in the society, in the economy. We're talking about thousands and thousands of active and retired military in every aspect of society. That's right, Veronica. Today, and just to put it in short, the, the, the elites or the power centers in this country could be divided into two. On the one hand, there is a deep state, and that includes the bureaucracy of the former regime, that includes the business people, the actual former ministers and diplomats, as well as uh, the, uh, the, the, the different bureaucrats and so on, and the military, the generals, the armed forces. On the other hand, what we have is the Islamists in, in both the conservative and the ultra-conservative, meaning the Brotherhood and the Salafis, as well as secular, liberal, and leftists slash nationalists, revolutionary forces, coalition, and so on and so forth. This is how it's divided today. Morsi, the new president, has the support of the civilian, the, the leftist and the liberal, as well as the Islamist branch of the new wave of revolutionary forces in the country. And the deep state has just basically realigned around the military and the old bureaucracy, as well as, for many people, they know the campaign of uh, Shafiq that we've seen competing with President Morsi. This is the power struggle that's going on. New revolutionary forces, new political forces coming to the scene, and the old bureaucracies and, and the military. This is the power struggle. We're in the midst of it. This is, in so many ways, evolving. We've just seen some the revolutionaries gaining some battles and the military gaining other battles, sometimes using the uh, using the, the, the old bureaucracies in the state. How will this go? We're not sure for now. We definitely know that the revolutionary forces and the political forces are on the ascendance and that the military is on the defensive. The old bureaucracy, some of its symbols are in jails and they've just lost the elections. The most fundamental aspect of it, Veronica, is this is going on politically and peacefully, meaning the revolution has just gone into some kind of a negotiated evolution of the revolution where the power struggles in this country are working against one another as Egypt moves forward. Thank you very much indeed as always Marwan Bishara live to us from Cairo.